And Heidi, if, if we do breakout groups, do you know how to bring the breakout group back into the main group? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> they won't be isolated forever. <laughs> <laughs> Unable to come home. We will try that out. I, I have a, a tutorial. I will uh, watch the tutorial in case I don't get it. Okay. All right. We'll be adventurous. Okay. Um, and hey, Tim, sorry, sorry for the confusion. I thought uh, I'll, just, I'll just go ahead and do this one today. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what we kind of... If point. you are interested, I, um, if you want any assistance just with recapping last week, that's something that I can, I can jump in and help out with a little bit, perhaps. Sure. Great. Well, let's go ahead and get started and see if more people will join us. Um, so let me record on my computer. We'll see if more people will join us uh, as we start talking. So hello, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Great to see everyone as usual. So last time we had a very fruitful discussion about a bunch of topics that erupted out of uh, our discussion. And um, I thought we could all, maybe Tim, this would be a good time to give a brief recap of kind of some of the things we talked about last time to transition us into this discussion. And then let's go around and we'll do like a one minute intro on just how you're doing, anything you want to share about yourself that you think would be good for us to hear today and also um, about what are some of the things you want to focus on uh, for today's discussion, any points of disagreement that you want to get ironed out in, in the group. And then um, I also thought we're going to try to have our shares a little bit shorter from two minutes and 30 seconds down to two minutes. And if that's too short, then next time we will scrap that and go back to two minutes and 30 seconds, but I thought we'd give it a try. And that'll give more time for clarification and some space around people's um, time that they talk so that after they talk, we have some time for follow-up questions. So that's my intention with trying to shorten it a little bit more. And again, if it doesn't work, then we'll go back to two minutes and 30 seconds. So Tim, you want to you give a brief uh, summary of last time to launch us into today? Yeah, you bet. Um, and, and this is uh, mostly taken from <clears throat> the uh, text thread, the chat thread, and a little bit of rewatching, but I didn't go through the whole thing. So maybe other people can also add in um, and I'll take notes to, uh, to help, just to help remember what, what hasn't been brought up and come back to that. So the overall topic last week was, what's your issue beef or challenge with uh, integral theory? Um, as usual, Ryan being provocative, like he likes to do. Um, and one of the first things that was brought up was a question about metaphors in how integral theory talks about stages and whether or not there was maybe an implied arrogance that was problematic in terms of um, uh, allowing or in, in sort of welcoming and including a broad number of people and how that might be impacting our current political um, divisions. So uh, within that, there is a question of vertical vocabulary. So in, in the way that the hierarchy is talked about, having higher or lower, having levels, and how those words might impact people based on how we use them generally, um, versus expansion type vocabulary, um, using the word larger maybe, or uh, increasing instead of say bigger, or well, instead of uh, greater. Um, and then maybe using levels, uh, uh, or replacing levels with regions. Um, another thing that was brought up in that same vocabulary question was spatial, uh, intensity, presence, and imminence. Those are things that I'd love. Um, I think Jeremy mentioned those, but if anybody uh, could briefly define those, I'd be really curious. Um, uh, and the next thing was a question of, um, is, the, uh, is the way that we talk about it and the way that we actually do it inclusive of more parts of us? So does it tend to be more heady? Does it tend to have um, is there a proper representation or useful representation of body and emotions or heart? Um, and uh, is that too green? Is talking about body too green was another thing that was mentioned. Um, another bullet point was, do we actually transcend this, this idea that we, as we move up levels, we let go of things below? And is that accurate? Do we, uh, another person had mentioned that sometimes we may drop into various uh, regions or levels um, moment to moment or day to day? Um, and is it possible that we lose core perspectives? If we're talking about someone in a certain uh, level not 
being able to speak to people on other levels. Is that true? Is there things that perhaps we lose if we inhabit one level all the time? Is it possible that there's actually perspectives that we're not including anymore? Another person questioned the idea of, uh, as we go up in holarchy, that we automatically have greater depth and lesser span. There's a question of whether or not we could have both greater span and greater depth, and when might that be true? Um, and then uh, one person, and this is, I, I think is actually super related to these other questions, um, but, but it, was, uh, it was spoken of in a different way. It's just saying shadow is misused or misunderstood, perhaps, in a lot of integral conversations. Um, and I think the last thing that I recall was um, someone questioning who, I think what was actually said was, who are we talking to? If we're talking about integral, who are the people we're talking to? And that was a sweet, it was one of the last things said, but it was really neat to bring that back to the very first thing said, which is the way we're talking about it, we're not talking to a number of people and it's going to scuttle the whole boat. That's it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tim. That was, that was all of my notes too. And um, now we'll go into uh, introductions. The, the one, one more thing I would add was, I think it was you, Tim, on one of the calls um, some time ago, you had mentioned the idea that people can share what stage of development within them that they're coming from when they're sharing. And maybe I could throw that into the mix, especially on the question of, is this too green? And, and for us to kind of introspect what stage of development is sponsoring our concern in that moment. So maybe that's just something I'd, I'd throw out there. Um, and also one more thing, Heidi and I were talking about the breakout groups at the beginning. And yeah, we'll see if we need them today and we'll see if we can draw people back so they're not stuck in the void forever. <laughs> but um, the idea of that was that there was a lot of, Tim suggested that, so thank you for that suggestion, Tim. There was a lot of things obviously that came up at the last call and we may not have time to um, clarify and, and hash out each one of them in, in particular. So having the breakout group will allow people to go and, and the two people or two or three or however many have a particular issue with a specific thing, they can go off into a separate room, hash it out, and then return to the main group to share their clarification and insight and, and give a summary so we're not, so we can do this more efficiently. And a lot of times in, in real life groups, this will happen uh, pretty regularly. So we'll see if we can do it on Zoom. So let's go to, let's go to the one minute introduction. So again, just say anything about how you're doing today and, and what you want to focus on from Tim's uh, big list. Go ahead, anyone. Um, okay, I guess I'll go. Um, I guess um, I think part of the problem kind of comes from defining uh, in, in defining uh, what exactly these stages are because in a way they're sort of um, the they're sort of the definitions are a bit loose and um, maybe if the definitions of you know what. <clears throat> what the stages are like um, uh, could maybe help with uh, de defining defining this uh, defining um, higher hierarchy of stages or holarchy of stages could help in uh, being able to uh, understand it uh, what where something's coming from so yeah I guess I would want to focus on uh, me personally. Uh, want to focus on uh, today, just um, sort of bringing clarity to uh, what an integral perspective is. Um, Great, thank, uh, thanks, Max. So, so really focusing on like clarifying what the stage, what what actually it is, and so we can actually move forward with the discussing. Yeah. Is it green or not? That kind of thing. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. I'll say one more quick thing. Um, during the two minute chairs, I'm going to give everyone a 30 second warning. I'm going to go like this for 30 seconds and then I'll interrupt you if you go over two minutes. Um, I'm going to take the lead about saying where you're at in terms of the spiral because that's been a real theme this week. Like the last two weeks, I've been kind of in orange space and really enjoying it, like kind of kicking ass in business. I'm feeling really um, adult and functional. And there's part of me of like, my emotions coming back and wanting to deal with them, but wanting to deal with them in a way that feels um, 
really skillful. It was a little bit on the back of the States call on Sunday. And um, I feel like there's some integration between orange and green that I need to do, but it's sort of at the moment, it's um, still a still a work in progress. So that's been um, kind of an interesting journey. And then for me, I think, yeah, I think the thing that stood out for me last week was about the debate about whether or something is a green uh, statement or perception, um, whether or not, I, I guess to me personally, that, that I think there's a big part of me that thinks that green is a really important part of integral. Um, it's about a minute and 10 seconds, Paul. <laughs> All right, well, there we go, I, I forfeit. So, so, so focusing on um, the green part in, sp in specifically. Yeah, I just think I think it's really important, and the debate about what what is good green and what isn't, and including the good and getting rid of the bad, just seems like a really, really important part of integral. Excellent, thank you. Um, morning, everyone. Um, I'm in a pretty happy awake mode. I'm going to spend most of this minute um, actually talking about just naming the things that I'm hoping to hear or share. One is uh, uh, what I said before is I'm curious to learn um, briefly more or even just a definition of what spatial intensity, presence, and imminence means, um, you know, to you, Jeremy, or, or if other people are familiar with those, with that, then for them. Um, I had a really, really, for me, compelling image that I'd love to share with people um, and just see it in your, consciousness and you can come back to me at another crossfire or else in this crossfire and just see if you like it as a metaphor because it just spoke to me about about stages and I'm also really interested in where there might be I mean I guess understanding impact of how the vocabulary um, affects or the impact of our vocabulary on who we're including or excluding culturally in these conversations. And sort of similarly, is there a certain shadow in that? Are there places that we've said, oh, I, you know, I'm above that now. And actually, of course, we're not. Um, those are my interests. Great, thanks, Tim. So did you, so Tim, then just to, just to clarify, so you said the impact of the vocabulary um, and how that would affect certain people culturally. Yeah, and I, if you want, um, maybe during the go round, I can expand on that if that's not super clear. Great, thank you. Well, I'm really scattered today, uh, even more so than on Sunday. I think we're in all of the structure stages or spiral all the time. It's a question of where our um, um, center of gravity is at any time and that can shift and I'm smeared along a number I'm going to have to leave this chat group early again today maybe 15 minutes early because I've got a designer and a, a publicity marketing agent now and I'm about to take my writing into a whole new realm of professional and I'm excited and terrified and, uh, and Ryan I will be conferring with you privately about what's an appropriate way to put this forward maybe through Damiano's website. But just to drop in now, um, basically all of my creative writing is my vision of our possible collective integral future. And so today I'm so scared, I'm just kind of along for the ride, I'll surf with whatever comes up. So as we are talking about uh, what we are doing or not doing, I wanted to say yesterday I streamed um, uh, the conversation with Ryan, and I think it's a very, it's, it came out very nicely about a new way of seeing politics, maybe from an inter, uh, integral perspective, and um, was very alive. And I would invite you to to watch that. And uh, yeah, for me, uh, since I'm mm, following a little bit Jeremy's uh, course, I'm sort of not so sure anymore of all these things which we have taken for granted <laughs> for all that time since we uh, were so um, fixed into the Weberian model, which I don't want to throw away, 
but I begin to see that there might be also some other way of looking at the uh, things. And so I haven't understood it yet completely, Jeremy, for sure. But it, it is sort of an opening of my mind to to try to integrate these things or see them together. And that's, I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. And maybe we can talk about that too. Maybe not today, but generally. I'll pop in here. Uh, thanks, thanks, Heidi and um, Karen. Congratulations! That's so exciting. Uh, as as a fellow writer, I'm just so excited for you. So, just wanted to say that. Um, yeah. So you know, just as a quick touching base, um, uh, I'm kind of integrating a recent conversation I had with the Merge podcast, um, exploring uh, meta modernism and, and Gebser and Integral and thinking about the climate crisis. So that's where my head is. But um, I'm really excited. Actually, um, these kinds of questions are the most exciting to me because I really want to learn how to interface with the Wilberian model and the Wilberian expressions. And that's the question I'm, I'm actually kind of exploring right now. How to bring these two together, not necessarily in a synthesis, but how do they relate? Um, how do I situate Wilber's model with this other understanding through Gebser's expressions about those structures and so on. So anyway, I'll keep it short. Hi everyone, Theo here. Um, yeah, for me, uh, I, I like the idea of talking about um, green emergence into a more healthy form. Uh, I've been kind of bugged with this idea for a little while and I, I'm always confronted with it because the people around me, they don't always get my perspective. I'm trying to bring them a bit outside of, you know, like the current form of thinking and like to me, it's obvious sometimes that it's contradictory when you're in a green position. You don't realize how your perspective or your action might actually go against what you want in some respect. Um, and, and it's hard to articulate this clearly. Um, and um, it's always kind of a struggle, I, I believe, to bring somebody on board is like, hey do you, like can we talk about this thing out there <laughs> you know like this meta perspective uh and i'd like to you know touch base a bit more on that um yeah to find some tricks to, to hear from your experiences that's pretty much it and for uh, how i'm doing i'm doing fine um still thinking a lot writing every day and uh, um had a really nice weekend with a um a visitor from um uh, south korea so it's always great to have um, a cultural exchange like this. Great, thanks, Theo. Um, Natalie, did you want to go? And also, I'll say, Charles, what we're just doing here, Charles, is we're doing one minute intros, just basically whatever you want to say, and also what topic from last week you want to focus on for today. So, one minute. Um. See here. I am really interested in um, talking about uh, a framework that I'm working on. It's which is integrating um, parts language, like internal family systems, um, and which is like whether we're coming from our emotions, our mental constructs, or our somatic sensorial sensations, um, and correlating that with the stages. How each stage has a center of gravity. And each state also has a resonant um, match with that. I can share a little diagram that I've been working on. Um, I can't do that yet. Ah. Um, um, for me, uh, a lot of the things that I want to share have some complexity to them. And I find that in this online framework, it's really hard for me to um, speak clearly enough when there's more time pressure and I need two or three tries at explaining something in order to bring the mental down into a clear like sensorial physical um, example explanation. Um, Time's up Natalie. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, finish that, finish that thought. Um, so to sum that up, like what I'm really interested in is um, exploring whether, 
higher stages or larger stages really are more mental or whether they include more somatic sensorial basis like that spatial um that that transpersonal element Thank, thanks, Natalie. And um, one more thing I'll add to that. Also, another question I had for the group was, what is the role that types play in determining mental and kind of body? Um, since some people tend to be more thinkers and some people are more feelers, you know, like Myers-Briggs and that kind of thing, or even Enneagram. Charles, how are you doing? Hey, Ryan. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Got tied up a little this morning, so that's why I'm late. So the question is, uh, well, what of the topics we discussed last week would I be interested in pursuing? Okay. Well, as I recall, uh, one of the ideas last week was that we need new metaphors for integral philosophy. I'd be interested in knowing more about that and exploring the idea of a uh, meta-theoretical metaphor in general. Uh, and also the observation that Paul made, that a lot of our conversation last week uh, was really taking place at the green level. I thought that was very insightful. I kind of agreed with it. And uh, would be interested in thinking about where did we spot the green operating when we talked about these topics. <clears throat> so those are two, and that'll be fine for now. Great, thanks, Charles. Did everyone go? I think everyone went. So I thought we could start with, with, with this uh, issue of this brain. Charles, can you turn off your mic? Thank you. I thought we could start with this issue of um, is this more green and are, are, are these concerns just more green? And maybe we can even expand the question into so who cares if it is? And also people who are promoting these issues, do you think this is more, or, or this concern like Karen and Heidi, do you think this is more green? And if so, um, the question would be, would, would there be any problems with that? And also would that mean maybe that integral doesn't include enough green? And so therefore you're trying to include more of a healthy version of green. And also to the people who are kind of wary of the greenness, I guess, what, what, would the pro, what were some of the dangers of this? Like maybe Charles and Paul, maybe your concern is that including the green would, might undermine the fundamental second tier center of gravity of uh, integral theory, something like that. So I just open up, open up to anyone. And we're doing two minutes and the 30 second warning. Go ahead, Charles. So um, uh, first of all, is hand raising the, uh, the protocol here, if a person wants to speak? Um, yeah, it, it can be helpful for um, me to track if a lot of people, multiple people want to speak at the same time. So I can be like, okay, Charles, then Theo, and then Karen, or whatever. Um, sometimes I don't see it. So if I don't see it, just go ahead and, just go ahead and speak. And if, I, if you want to talk when someone's talking and I'm not seeing your hand raised, and just privately message me or on the chat. And then I'll make sure to reserve your time. So good question. Okay. Thanks, Charles. Yep. Sounds good. Um, okay. On the, on the issue of uh, green elements in the, in the conversation, uh, I don't think anybody at Integral should be afraid of green. Uh, what we want to do is honor all the healthy aspects of green. So if in this group we've overlooked something uh, that should be uh, identified as uh, something healthy, and worthy of being talked about, that would be great. One of, one of the downsides of, of sort of um, operating, discussing on the green level without being aware of it, is uh, that when the group is trying to make a decision, it never really gets there. Uh, this is one of the downsides of green. It recognizes so many points of view and multiplicities and wants to honor them all that um, uh, even a matter like choosing a topic for this discussion uh, can be a lengthy, time-consuming process if consensus is the goal. So, uh, Ryan, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but I, I sent you an email message when, uh, in response to your 
email asking for advice on half a dozen topics that came up last week. I suggested that you decide, otherwise we're gonna get involved in a lengthy conversation about what topic to talk about. So I'm kind of old fashioned. I, I think the moderator's job is to decide what the topic would be. And of course, uh, he or she could accept suggestions from anybody, but it simplifies and streamlines the process if, if the moderator uh, takes that responsibility. Like the first, the first one I joined, remember you were inviting me, Ryan, to a debate and you specified the topic. I thought that was uh, very crisply handled, uh, very efficient and led to uh, uh, what I thought was a really great debate and discussion. Thank you, Charles. Um, Karen, did you uh, have a response, a retort? Um, well, Chip, uh, something to throw in. I actually did not see last week's conversation as green. I mean, this is the, I hadn't even considered it in those terms, but if I had to specify, I would have said it was very much teal, you know, pushing off from green well into teal, because what we're attempting here is not just to validate every single point of view possible, we are attempting to bring these together into some organic way. And that is at least in beginning teal to me. And I, I, I certainly echo Charles where one of the pop problems with green is that you never, you cycle around endlessly and never put together any kind of structure. But I think chats like we're having now are useful and we see they help us see where the energy is where does the energy spontaneously arise and then ryan will be putting you'll be putting together things like debates or presentations and i'm eagerly looking forward to a debate type structure with charles and with jeremy at some point in the future when my life is less fragmented and and then presentations you know where one of us speaks for 10 or maybe even 15 minutes and then we have a group discussion around it but things like we're doing now that are so mushy allow for us to see where the energy spontaneously arises what brings the spark to the eye and then ryan can later you know take the leadership and choose you know where to go further from here so i i i salute the green i salute the teal but if I had to make a choice, I would have said teal rather than green for last week, over and out. There was going to be something I was going to say, actually, because I think last week I was genuinely um, ambiguous about um, sometimes some things seem green, and I was just thinking about it. That, um, I think it's probably quite difficult to be able to, at times, tell the difference between green and teal. Um, but they're both kind of similar in some ways, like yellow or or first kind of integrals to me seems to be more heady um, and green and teal seem to be a lot more um, in the body and intuitive and all this kind of stuff. So I think for that instance, it can be um, confusing to, to pass the two. Like when it, sometimes whenever I hear somebody talking about things being too heady, I immediately tend to think of green, even though that's probably a little bit like lacking nuance. Um, which is one of my beefs with, I think, I'm not sure if this is green or not, but some of, I hear a green stereotype, for example, between things being heady and things being in the body in touch with the feelings. And to me, the, the, that distinction is really quite, um, it's a bit mediocre. Like I think, because I always think of like, which body we're we talking about. We're talking about like physical things, we're talking about emotional things, we're talking about subtle body, are we talking about like various different expressions. Um, and it was hinted a little bit last week of like different ways of the mind as well, like rational, um, the psychic, the imagination, all this kinds of stuff. Um, and there we go. <laughs> was well, that, that, was, that was 30 that was seconds, seconds, Paul. You got 30 seconds. Okay. Um, yeah, and to me, the... Um, I don't know that this is going to be a very possibly green slash teal thing to say, but I think some of my distinction is based on feelings. Like sometimes people feel green and they feel teal. Um, and to add to the disadvantage of green, I find it to be very airy fairy and anti making distinctions. Like there's something about just being in this sort of second chakra soup um, and having a distaste for wanting to chop it up basically. So, so Paul, so basically it sounds like, basically, what does it mean when people say be more in the body and, and that kind of thing? 
right? So like getting, getting, a, I'm hearing a lot of this theme of clarification. People want to, clar to clarify uh, definitions. I think it's a really good place to start. Heidi, did you have your hand raised? And then I think Tim. Yeah, I had my hand raised. I wanted to, to address this, but how we say things and what stages we are in. And I have posted on the Damiano website the assessment of Terry O'Fallon. And I did it, and it was very astonishing. They, what you answer, they put it in certain, from where you come from, and they don't have the same stages, which Ken Wilber has. They have numbers or something. And um, I, I would have invited you to do that. Now I'm looking on the website, and they ask now $400. I had it for free. So it's a shame because it was uh, would have been really nice if we had done that and answered and then see what answer they calculate uh, corresponds to what level, you know. And um, but so it's uh, I, I can only give you mine and then we can <laughs> think about it in a, in, a, in a sort of a workshop. But that was really interesting, you know, to just answer out of your belly, let's say, and then somebody stays there and uh, gives you the um, assessment where, which level you are with that answer. You know, that's interesting. Um, I'm just reminding myself, the current topic is about green. Is there enough green? Is it healthy green? Is it unhealthy green? Um, and I also, as a couple people have voiced, am really uh, interested in and distracted by language. Um, and I really like what, what I judge is like more accurate, more specific uh, language. And so, Paul, to what you were saying, I feel like, or I think that um, that airy-fairy part is not, it's not so much that it's airy-fairy in the sense that it's talking about emotions or feelings or the subject matter, I think it's whether or not it's specific. So that specificity of language is really helpful to me uh, because we don't all assume. That's one point. Another point is I think when referring to green, it would be helpful for me if, if in these conversations we could be specific about healthy green, unhealthy green. And that might bring the shadow conversation into it. But when we talk about one color and we're implying the negative aspects of it, and we talk about other colors and we imply the positive aspects, that gets back to that question of arrogance or of um, implied uh, value judgments that I just think are inaccurate. I just think it's not helpful. So being specific there is something that I'd be curious about. And, I, and Ryan, you spoke to that, so I appreciate your summary there. Um, and the last, the last question I have is, is it possible that at some point specificity or being investigating language is itself a hang up? That we could at some point be getting lost in small distinctions. And that's less of an issue for me because I live in language, so I'm interested in those distinctions. But I've had that feedback from counselors or friends saying, you know, you're almost using this as a way out of dealing with feelings or of dealing with fuzzier aspects. So I'm curious if there's shadow there. Um, but if I could just one of those points, I would say specificity and maybe using healthy and unhealthy when we're naming um, stage. Tim, what, what you said reminded me too of um, like how to pick our battles, <laughs> you know, and, and what, what to, what, like Heidi was saying at the last, like how many angels fit at the top of the pin, you know, what, what is the criteria to really pick our, pick our debates, you know? So good point. Yeah, for me, I think that, that uh, rings a bell, the specificity of the language. And when we're talking about, you know, something more broad is like a concept and it's always good to bring it back to a, a case study if you want, or an actual event. Um, when it comes to um, green manifesting itself in, into its healthy way, I think we all kind of understand, okay, like compassion, openness, a pluralistic worldview um, that led into a lot of change into our societies and still is happening. And now the unhealthy side being more like the nihilistic, uh, the not going forward, the kind of stuck into uh, uh, everybody's got, like everybody has the right to their opinion and all the same. Uh, kind of thing like that it, it 
you get into a conversation with someone and you're like, uh, okay, what do you say to this? You know, <laughs> where do we go from there? Like, you're not able to make distinction. And I think that's the healthy part of, of an integral worldview is like when you come in into a discussion, you're willing to uh, take those multiple perspectives and, 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 and sometimes criticize them because you're like, well, I could see that this is a problem if we're trying to move forward when it comes to right now. Like if everybody, if everybody is their own little kingdom, uh, we're going to end up hitting the wall pretty, pretty hard, you know, like in terms of consumptions and uh, in terms of uh, we're not able to make distinction into what is um, better or less good. <laughs> Um, and, and you're always like, when you're green, you're always like kind of walk like on the, yeah. When you're, uh, you're walk, you're talking more into an unhealthy green. You're always like walking on uh, eggshells. <laughs> it's like, what do I say? Like not to offend anyone. Um, and then you end up going probably into, uh, being arrogant. <laughs> There's no way out. So, um, yeah, that's my feeling about this. It's also my experience. Um, I've had to mention many times to my mom and sister about like, they're talking to me about more like esoteric stuff sometimes, more like uh, seeing a medium. It doesn't ring a bell to me. So I'm like, well, I'm into Thanks, other stuff. Steel. It's about two yeah. minutes. So here's some case studies. <laughs> Walking on eggshells around green. I think we've all experienced that. Right, uh, can I um, add something? Yeah, please. Here. Go ahead, Matt. Okay. So, um, I think what the problem here is, is that uh, the, the idea of stage is a bit too general. And um, really, we're having a difficulty in understanding uh, what line we're talking about. Because in, in some regards, I think <clears throat> what we respect and like about green is this sort of embodied ritualistic sort of like, uh, like the 60s, you know, people were living there touching they were giving flowers like it was they were they were living that spiritual life that in in a way we've sort of been cut off from that we used to uh embody our ancestors used to embody by understanding the how the stars and the and the and the moon um interacted with the forces of nature being able to hunt in a way we've been taken away from this and instead we're living in this computerized mechanized world and the thing is that that's not a problem with integral that's a problem with with our community with our with humanity not being able to integrate certain lines um and so <clears throat> the thing about um the, so then just defining the stages generally um, green at uh, green um, and it's hard to define them because it's not like there are concrete things but um, at, at some point we question rationality we come aware of conscious subjectivity and that's kind of where the green happens you know it's like if you take a bunch of mushrooms you say oh my god you know everything's different than I thought it was but the sixties kind of showed that, that <clears throat> we, there were positive things that happened there, but, um, we, there, there wasn't everything that we needed. So then integral it's Max, it's about two minutes integral, and 10 seconds yeah, okay, is, is paradox. And so that's, so paradox and questioning rationality and then paradox is, is what integral represents. So, yeah. Great, thanks, Max. Jeremy, did you want to uh, get in on this? Yeah, sure, sorry. I've just been kind of um, taking it all in because um, as you know, I'm kind of coming in at this from a very different orientation. So I'm trying to like grok this orientation and then reflect it back to mine. Um, so yeah, I mean, are we, what are we talking about in terms of, what are we really exploring here? Like healthy and unhealthy forms of green? Are we just talking about green? Are we talking about in terms of our conversation last week and how it kind of sounded green? And then we were like, well, how do we distinguish? I'm almost getting a sense of how do we distinguish teal from green? Because we're getting a lot of discussions and explorations of like, well, you know, the past isn't 
past, present, and future isn't linear, and there's things that we've left behind, and that we really should be taking the other stages more seriously, and not in, with arrogance or the assumption of, you know, being higher. So, yeah, that sounds very green, but I, I, I guess, um, I, I think what I'm hearing here, though, is that when you get off the rails, I'm hearing a little bit of echo, but uh, when you get off the rails of linearity, it's very easy to feel like you're falling into chaos and you're moving back into flatland or, or relativism. But maybe we're not. Maybe there's this other organic structure that's at work here that we're all kind of pointed to. And it feel, it's, it's a feeling rather than a distinct, we can get into distinctions, but it's kind of a feeling of the whole. Yeah, and that, that's, that's my main point at the outset. Okay, so we'll have Karen and then Charles. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. This is a new organic unity we're moving into because involution, um, I don't want to say it precedes evolution, but it's imminent in the evolution. There is the involution. There are higher orders. They are potentials as yet. We have come up through six levels of development. Uh, that's the um, first tier. Now, I'm really radical. I think second tier is going to have, turn out to have six stages, state structures also. And I think third tier will turn out to have six, and I have reasons I won't go into now. But to me, the distinction for me at the moment, the distinction between green and teal is, teal is where we start to take all those pieces that we have so graciously included. We've reached out and included at green. Now we're trying to put them together into a new organic unity. And at second tier, we are recapitulating first tier in a higher octave. So we're going back and we are going back and reclaiming all the thing, all the babies we left behind with the bathwater at every one of those first tier levels. We're reclaiming our body, we're reclaiming our instincts, our embodied presence, we're reclaiming our emotions, we're reclaiming our red power, our blue virtues, those good solid virtues, our sense of belonging and duty. I mean, it, we're, we're reclaiming all of those and we're going to re integrate them at a higher level and the transcendent we start to transcend the intellect and that gets exciting thank you and and I can maybe I'd even do a presentation on that later Ryan sometime we can talk about that but yes we're moving into something thrilling that even transcends reason but includes it okay over and out go ahead Charles Hey, Karen, I love your idea of uh, reclaiming, uh, you know, what's good about those lower levels. Because green doesn't do that. Uh, it's, it's forever indecisive. Uh, so uh, teal, uh, according to integral theory, is the first level at which real integration is starting to take place, just as you described. Um, so uh, so that's, that's pretty helpful. And I wonder if we've specified precisely enough the difference between teal and green <clears throat> um, to, to Tim's satisfaction. <clears throat> Tim, I was really interested in your comments about, <clears throat> about the difficulties using language and, and your predilection, your preference for specificity and precision. I share that. <laughs> So the attempts uh, that people have offered today to try to clarify what we mean by, uh, by green, healthy and unhealthy, um, relationship to the teal level, uh, this is great. And, and the more precise it gets, the happier I am. And uh, I hope we continue to probe this. Can I follow up with you on that, Charles? You have to ask Ryan, but yeah, fine with me. Could you just list things that you think are valuable and healthy in the green for me? Sure, uh, I'll do my best. Probably won't be complete, but uh, we have a lot of other people to help out. Uh, green is associated with um, the virtue of tolerance to toward a variety of worldviews. And by the way, when we talk about these levels generally, I think that we are usually talking about worldviews. That is the general orientation uh, of the person uh, or, or the uh, population towards the world. Okay, uh, don't know if that helps or not. But, but green has a worldview that's very expansive. 
it recognizes uh, that uh, for, for Westerners, the Eurocentric worldview has been perhaps too dominant. There are other worldviews that are found in Indian culture, Chinese, uh, Arabian, um, and ancient cultures that uh, should be honored, should be studied, uh, should be brought into consciousness. Uh, that's all good. That's all healthy. Um, what else do we find typical at Green? Well, in terms of emotional intelligence, we find great sensitivity for the plight of marginalized populations, whether racial or uh, gender-based. Uh, so that's another positive aspect. Um, and the desire for consensus, I think, is basically healthy. Uh, it's just that one, uh, you know, gets too fixated on it, it becomes very difficult to get anything done. So um, th those are the um, those those are the the major characteristics I see uh, of a healthy green. And if I looked at some additional lines of development, I'd probably find some more. So maybe others can help out. So for now, that's that's where I'll stop. Go ahead, Heidi. So for me, we have to add the care for the whole world, the envir environment and these things, that they are important. And to see uh, the, that it is connected, what happens in the rainforest is connected with uh, our life here, which the stages before couldn't see and couldn't realize also the pollution thing. And so that we are... Um, we need to take care for more than our own lives and our family and things like that, but for the whole planet. Um, I have one which is, I guess, the whole introspective realm. Like, I've noticed this this week, actually, of, like, there's part of me, I think, in orange, of just getting off with just, like, just smacking lots of pins in heads and just, like, being really productive. And then there's part of me that goes back into introspection. I'm like, why am I doing all this stuff? Like, what's the point? All this meaning um, and value, which I think Green really brings in. And um, it opened up a distinction. I was thinking about what you were saying, Karen, about this kind of integration of going backward. Um, because to me, I think I see a little bit of that in Green. Like, for example, the inner child, I think there's a massive amount of work at green to to reintegrate that to to own emotions and stuff like this so like i get a little bit confused in my head of like because there's obviously a difference i think to me it's a lot more extensive at teal the amount of integration that's going on um but it made me think of like needing needing some distinction i'm kind of enjoying uh hearing people make more and more distinction between green or integral or whatever um for me i think when I think of green and I think of intuition, I think of emotions. When I think of teal, I think of the subtle body. Um, I'm not sure if that's, if that's right, but that's just kind of where I'm at. Um, and also I'd put a distinction of like, what's the difference between yellow integral and teal in terms of integrating the past? Um, Cause presumably they both do it and there obviously must be a difference, but personally I sort of, other than saying teal is probably more, intuitive than integral. I'm not sure that I know uh, what the difference would be. Uh, maybe I can help with that. Uh, had a discussion in, in my uh, online group last Monday about this, and I went into the Enter to Life website and tapped on the word teal where it was underlined in one of the essays I was reading, and up popped a little glossary uh, entry. And that was really helpful, and that was from Corey DeVos, I'm quite sure. Uh, so I, I think he's trying to compile a, uh, a complete glossary of integral terms, uh, so that was very useful. But in this entry, um, what, uh, what I saw was the, the difference between teal and integral was described as um, overall, both are integrative in, this, in the way in which Karen described, but that teal does that from a secular point of view. So, so teal is capable of, of vision logic and, and can uh, recognize the validity of the healthy aspects of all the levels. 
but it uh, does not talk about uh, uh, spirit as the driving force of evolution, uh, doesn't really see the levels of the development uh, above integral. So those, what, what we call the higher spiritual stages of development, assuming they exist, uh, Teal doesn't talk about them or uh, doesn't, um, or isn't interested in them. I lost my picture here for the moment. You guys see that? Uh, yeah, we can, uh, yeah. We can still see you. Okay. okay. So I better not do anything strange. Aha, there we go. Well, yeah. You want to wrap yeah. up that so thought, Charles, and then we'll, we'll go to Natalie. I don't know how that happened. Uh, yeah, so um, Teal, is, uh, Teal is thoroughly or nearly thoroughly integrative, but uh, secular in its approach to integrating worldviews, uh, rather than talking about uh, higher spiritual stages and perhaps even um, higher spiritual states, according to Go this ahead. glossary yeah. item. Thanks, Charles. Go ahead, Natalie. Um, I'm going to share the chart that I made the last week to help describe what I'm wanting to do. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yes. That Great. Um, okay, so if you look at the very bottom, um, there's teal and um, turquoise and then green stages. I don't use the colors, but I use descriptive words to describe them. And um, what I'm finding is that like um, a sense of intuition, um, like a higher intuition really comes online at higher stages. And that intuition, um, for me, it's largely based on somatic sensations. And our mind, our mental constructs can help us interpret those somatic sensations. But the higher that we go, we learn to interpret um, those somatic sensations on our emotions as pointing to something that is integrative within us, within all the different parts of all the stages. If you think of like internal family systems, um, each stage has like a view and a part and a, a thing that it's trying to communicate and a way that it communicates. And then this is also true between all of us um, as, as people and as a, as a collective. And so the, um, from green, we're living in an emotional um, way of navigating. For me, from um, turquoise or from the integrative, we're living from a somatic sensation. Um, way of way of really navigating using that higher intuition and then as we get into the transpersonal stages um, we start to really trust the emotions that come up we start to trust the somatic sensations and start to trust the mental ways of interpreting and communicating them um, so that we have we start to release control in a way the higher that we go yeah thank you I'll pop in here because I have to run in a couple of minutes. But um, yeah, that, that's a good jumping off place, Natalie, because um, one of the terms I mentioned last time was presence. And I think it was intensity and presence. And that was linked to imminence. But these are all kind of descriptions of the experience that Gebser uses of integrality, which um, in which the abstraction of the mental structure and the perspectival is um, uh, balanced or perhaps deflated and re-anchored in the body in presence itself and that presence yields and opens to process that temporix is embedded in presence like to be in the now doesn't mean just to be in the the kind of um, uh, uh, changeless now but to be in a present in which time is unfolding and folding and that processes are revealing themselves to us and there's a kind of uh, an intuitive ordering that we begin to be sensitive to it's a kind of embodied intelligence it's a it's an intelligence of presence that the integral starts with and it's more imminental i use imminence because um well deleuze uses it in in terms of it's things are not apart uh, it doesn't need to be higher or lower it's imminent in the sense that it's intimate with us and so all of the structures 
uh, therefore remain imminent to us and present with us and able to be accessed um, at any given moment. So um, I just wanted to bring that in there just to kind of, to, to kind of bring up the, the very important topic of presence and how the present can be intensified in our consciousness as a sort of hyper wakefulness, which is not just the waking ego, but is integrated. Um, and they mention other terms in there, but I don't think there's time to really go into them, uh, except to mention that synthesis is replaced by cystasis, which is kind of like injecting temporics and presence into our modeling and our thinking, and it moves us out of abstraction. So maybe I'll ask a follow-up question to Jeremy, since you said you have to go soon. I want to um, use your brain while you're still here. <laughs> so um, my, my question to you is, I, at least what I am gathering as kind of one of the core themes of this conversation is like, how do you distinguish or how do you discern? And you threw out a couple of big words here, um, as you usually do. You said that Gebser distinguishes mental synthesis from integral slash aperspectival cystasis and cineresis. And um, I guess my question is, how does one discern whether you're using an integral type of cognition or a mental level type of cognition? And how do you know when you're going too overboard with the mental type of cognition? Like maybe you can give an example from your own personal life since you know this stuff better than me. Oh, well, um, it's, it's really, okay, the, the biggest thing is, is temporex and how much does time, uh, how much is time kind of governing and, and opening your forms of perception, and how much are you creating a static model? Uh, I think there are characteristic attitudes that are in mental thinking. Uh, striations, layers, levels, lines, mapping, cartography, spatializing temporal processes as points on a grid or steps and levels. These are all kind of spatializing attitudes. So uh, Gebs are saying the introduction here, the style of thinking that's a little bit different, that's sort of animating these spatial attitudes are these temporal aspects. So becoming, emergence, um, the, the presence of the past, the presence of the future, moving the spatial plane so it starts to become, rather than flat or static, it starts to move. So anything that's animating our thinking and bringing in process and to the degree that our language begins to reflect processes and dynamisms, then we're beginning to enter into this a perspectival integral style of thinking. And a lot of things are very in between. So it's very hard to discern that because we've been introducing spatial thinking for the past 200 years, but we're still kind of oriented towards, um, uh, uh, well, fixating things in maps and grids and that kind of thing. So, so process and temporics, and that's the stasis for Gebster, that's what that means in sort of beginning to animate things. It's moving things from like um, the third dimension to the fourth dimension in physics and mathematics. It's, it's talking about evolution. It's trying to express development in these maps that we're using, but we're still kind of getting stuck. Well, there's higher and there's lower. That's the kind of the spatial sort of still in there. And this is not something that like, there's an elite group of people who get you know, the inner goal and they, they figured out the new language and the new concepts, but Gebser's always talking about how language cops, concepts and our maps themselves have to begin to reflect the insights and the perceptions we're talking about, which is these temporal processual descriptions. And we have to continuously disentangle ourselves, I think, from um, uh, our tendency to spatialize our thinking in terms of static maps and so forth. Thanks, thanks, Jeremy. We'll, we'll, we'll have to chew into this for another 10, 11 hours sometime uh, later on. <laughs> Natalie, um, go ahead, Natalie. Um, I just want to share, share my excitement and enthusiasm um, that what you're sharing, Jeremy, is really the challenge that I have on these Zoom calls is that there's so much that um, floods up from this, this somatic sensorial spatial place, and I don't quite have the way to grab all of the language and put it all together and communicate it in a way that that feels um, accurate to what what is really flowing through and um, yeah I'll leave it there I just feel like a lot of enthusiasm I feel really seen by you I feel like a huge sense of like relaxing and opening in my system so um, thank you for this conversation so far thanks Nat. that's that's exciting um, the, the, my feeling is there wherever these new con I mentioned this last time, wherever these new concepts are and wherever we're trying to find new ways to speak and articulate, 
there's a lot of energy and excitement and there should be, there's a lot of creativity. Like th that's a good marker. That's another answer to Ryan's question. Like how do you, where do you lean into and how do you distinguish it? Well, it feels energizing. It feels opening. Um, it feels like you can bring your brain into it and all these other aspects of your being into it. So. I have a, a comment to make. Um, yeah, to me, like that resonated a lot because in myself, when I feel, think, um, perceive, it's, it's rarely in those linear terms. Like if we think of it, like our language is so oriented towards exterior thing. And, and uh, when we think about concepts like non-duality that we cannot talk about, it's exactly that. It's like, well, we're not able, we're not supposed to describe it. It's not something you can describe because it's not part of this structure of description of, 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 of stating certain um, elements that are, you know, um, visual, uh, that you can visualize or you can um, put words onto. So I'm, I'm curious to learn a bit more about these different terminology because it opens up to this other world in us, this other uh, sense making in us that is not linked into those exterior oriented concepts. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks, Theo. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, Jeremy, do you want to say something before you, you have to leave? <laughs> I want to hear Karen then, and then I'll pop that. Because this is to Jeremy. Yes, Jeremy, I totally endorse everything you said. I am thrilled about this because to me, literally new dimensions are opening up. I mean, literally, we are going to become conscious in four and five dimensions. And I'll say more about that another time. But as we transcend this very re um, structured, structure like Ken Wilber's systems and so on, I want to make sure that we include them even as we transcend them, because if we reject all structure, then we're just back in green and move around and around and never go anywhere. So just the note, yes, everything you said, but let's not reject the structures. Let's include them as appropriate as we transcend them. Thank you. Great. Okay. So I have to run now, but thank you, Karen. And thanks for the good question, Ryan, as well. Um, see you guys Sunday. Thanks, Jeremy. I'll see you then. I would like to share just my, my feeling now, but I have from this uh, conversation. I, in the last 10 minutes, more or less, I got very energized. Before I was sort of, oh, a little bit tired because we were sort of turning around and didn't really get the, uh, the, the juice. And in the last 10 minutes, more or less, it, it came out. And I really, it feels good that we are, it seems like we, uh, circling around and slowly getting little pieces of things and they come together, you know, and that's, who knows what will come out. But, and then to Karen, I want to say it, uh, I really appreciate that. I do think we, we shouldn't throw anything away, but just not keep focused on it as the only thing, you know, as if that was reality. And I really appreciate our being together to open more possibilities because I feel some, oh, this, maybe this, maybe this, oh, oh yeah, and maybe we can knit them together, all these things, and that's ex this is exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Heidi. I appreciate your analogy, your metaphor of kind of like a circle, or we're spiraling in, so at times it seems like we're going nowhere, but we are actually getting somewhere, you know, like spiral dynamics. Um, yeah, I was just going to say just a little bit from Karen, like Heidi, just saying that we want to include the the structure. Um, so sometimes why I feel like I'm too clinging onto the mat and other times it's embracing it. And I think there's something about saying that the map and the territory kind of evolve together, but that sounds like quite a heady thing. But my experience sometimes is almost like a an anxiety, like the map is going to completely melt and it's going to be completely eviscerated by the territory. Um, and again, like, I keep thinking that one of the really big intuitions or bodies that kicks in integral and beyond is the, is the soul body. It certainly feels like that to me, like the amount of information I might be taking on physically or energetically, um, that feels like 
dissolving, but also the size. And I'm not sure if I'm understanding some of Jeremy's terms referencing Gebser, but the thing about it made me think of a, a, a deep sense of time. Like when I think of this spiral and I think of that this thing is thousands or hundreds of thousands of years old, depending on how far you go back. And I remember going to um, Salisbury Cathedral, so this big kind of, uh, well, cathedral essentially. And there was a certain like intellectual thing of appreciating um, how blue it was or how, how much they went through, but it felt really energetic. Like it felt like it wasn't just an intellectual interfacing with this thing. It felt like this really deep sense of energetic experience of like how different life was there. And it was some weird blend of like um, really feeling the past in the moment and also expanding onto the, the future. I'm not sure that I can, that I can articulate that other than there's a lot that seems to kick in at integral teal that just feels really like subtle body energy. Um, that I think has plenty of ambiguity to be fair, so probably more ambiguity than green has to deal with. Um, that I, I definitely like to see included at integral. Um, and fittingly, I'm sort of running out of words. Like I feel like I'm <laughs> just spacing out a bit now. So yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I could add a little bit to that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like uh, part, it seems that like part of what's missing from our culture or whatever is this like community, this like ability to come together and connect with each other and like mother nature. And um, it's like those kinds of rituals were all like, taken over by religion and then religion sort of became this thing that we threw away but at the same time there was a lot in like in those practices in that spirituality or whatever you want to call it but um that i think we need and uh maybe you know what green does is it it begins to recognize uh begins to recognize that those things are important but it's not really sure how to express them and then i think in the teal uh an integral it begins to be integrated and um and hopefully that's what we're doing here we're we're able to break apart the bad ideas in society and at the same time bring out good ideas and the good experiences that that we um that we need to to grow yeah go ahead natalie so i feel like green is a stage where we start to recognize awareness of awareness as a more common experience um, for the first time and as we move through the um, more complex or larger or higher stages. Um, that awareness of awareness helps us organize our emotional and our sensorial or physical somatic experiences in new ways. And so um, I'm still, like we've been talking about this, but I, I still feel really curious about how can we include the specificity of those sensorial indicators or textures because for me they're very specific i can't quite get my language to be as specific as those physical experiences because there's so much complexity that can happen in a second sensorially but to be specific in my language takes a long time and a lot of loops and then there's awareness there's this body and there's this awareness and these higher stages are really integrating them. And so how can conversation match these three different things, the awareness, the sensorial, and the specificity of all of it? Karen. Yes, that's what we're doing here, Natalie, and the rest of you. We are co-creating the new vocabulary we need. We are co-creating the new awareness of awareness we need. Charles, we are co-creating the new 
um, metaphors we need. This, to me, is part of what distinguishes teal from turquoise or from lower integral from upper integral is at teal, we are just co-creating this whole new awareness where, you know, what Ken Wilber likes to quote, um, um, what's his name, Keegan, saying the subject of the previous stage becomes the object of the subject of the next stage. We are taking awareness at all the six first tier levels and making them the objects. And we need a whole new vocabulary. We need a new semiology. We need a new set of metaphors. We co-create them at Teal, and that's what we're doing here. And I am profoundly grateful for this community. And then at the next level up, we start to live from them. And Natalie, maybe at that point, the conversation becomes easier because we have already embodied these in our bodies, our emotions, our intellects, and so on. But I am so thrilled to be part of this. I mean, this community here is a dream I've had for like 10, 15 years to find a group of people like you where we can all chew into this together. Um, and I'm going to repeat what Thich Nhat Hanh, that, Buddhist, um, uh, that, that Vietnamese Buddhist teacher, said, the next Buddha may be a Sangha, it may be a community not just one enlightened person, but a collective that collectively creates the next level of enlightenment. I thought I'd just jump in here since we have about 15 minutes uh, left. So I, I kind of wanted, to, and then we'll have Theo and then Charles, go ahead. Um, I kind of I wanted to address some of the agenda items and see if they were sufficiently answered or, or if they should have been refocused more, or, you know, have more focus on including things like, um, is this, are we talking about green here or are we talking about teal? It seems like, you know, when Heidi had commented that there was like a sh shift for her like 15 minutes ago, it seemed like there was some kind of integration that happened between multiple stages and we kind of bumped up a, a stage. But I'm wondering if that's true, if other people felt like that too. And also this thing of like, what does it mean to be too heady and, and in your body? I felt like that was, Jeremy kind of addressed that. And so I kind of wanted to, um, just throw those out there that those were things we initially agreed to focus on. So let's have Theo and then Charles go, and then we'll have to start wrapping it up. Yes, Karen, thanks. I wanted to um, add into that. To me, this, these kind of discussions we have, um, and as many as we can have with different communities and, and people, we, we share uh, these, these types of thinking uh, is, is really essential to uh, have this emerging uh, language and also practice um, embodied practice and, and mental practice as well and so on um, and I'm, I'm also really grateful because I've, I've been probably looking for this for for many years uh, in Vancouver I have a little community that we, we reunite every month and we talk about different subjects and that's been really enlightening to me like um, uh, important to me uh, and 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 just making this habit of willing to go there and taking the time, even though sometimes it's a bit like, where are we going with this? Like, what is it about? And we get lost. But sometimes this process makes us find some uh, more, some communion, some ideas, or like just hearing you out, all of you, like your different perspective on this subject or, or these subjects are, are really essential for me to kind of make my own mind out of it as well, or my own experience out of it. So um, one thing uh, I've been trying to do more uh, is rather than think is let, I don't know how to call it, but it's let the inspiration come to me because I'm thinking a lot about economics and capitalism and, and sustainable development these days. And I'm letting, trying to like tr see through something I'm not even able to think about clearly. And, and I feel that helps. I, I don't know how to call it yet, but uh, I'm sure you, know, you can relate to that kind of experience. Thanks, Theo. Well, Charles, go. And then for the closeouts, Karen will start since she has to go. So go ahead, Charles. Uh, my remarks are, are kind of inspired what Natalie uh, has been talking about during this meeting. Um, I, I sense a uh, desire on her part to somehow integrate uh, the what she calls the sensory, somatic, uh, energetic, emotional uh, feelings that she has with the integral model. Uh, I want to point out in that respect that uh, the integral model is through and through an intellectual creation. And to talk about it is an intellectual exercise. It's a philosophy. And I think any, any attempt to directly incorporate one's uh, bodily sensations and emotions that you're, that you're feeling at any given moment into the system is going to fail. 
um, what what uh, where where uh, one's emotions and and body senses and uh, intuitions at that level fit in is uh, number one with integral life practice. That that's where you um, that that's where those things get integrated, and that's where you work on them. Um, in terms of integrating those items of your experience into the model, uh, that happens in the emotional line of development, where you reflect, reflect on uh, uh, one's emotional uh, state of being and, and development as best we can reconstruct it, and then learn how to uh, clearly talk about those things in, in a way that furthers growth. Um, so, but but that, that, that again, when you start talking about feelings and emotions, that again is an intellectual exercise and does not in itself incorporate the actual feelings into the activity. I hope that helps. Um, so I, I think we should start doing our two minute uh, checkouts here. And so uh, you can just kind of say, um, what if anything was clarified for you during this call what what did you have some resolution on and also what was still unclear and what you would like to chew into more so let's have karen go first since you have to uh get going then i think natalie had her hand up great well charles what an amazingly beautiful little synchronicity that you made that speech right now because i'm going to use my wrap-up time to say something i offered um, Ryan via a chat. I had an experience uh, a number of years back that was very embodied at the beginning. It was pure beige. I mean, it was an encounter with a black widow spider in my kitchen. I was in total survival mood, but it blasted me up a number of levels until I ended up with kind of a, I can only put the say it's five dimensional state of consciousness where I saw how everything is a projection. All of manifestation is a projection of our consciousness. I cannot possibly do justice to that in two minutes. So I offered Ryan to do a present, maybe a 10 minute presentation at some future Thursday meeting and where it kind of talk through it. And then maybe we can, that would be a, a good time to, to come back and visit your point perhaps. So I just want to use my time here to let you know, I've thrown that into the pot as a possible future topic for a presentation on Thursday. And with that, um, actually, I will be able to stay because my appointment has just te now texted me that she's running late so I can stay and listen to all of you check out too, <laughs> over and out. Um, thank you, Charles, for your share. Um, it points to the, the thing that I'm working with is, um, maybe a suggestion for future topics is, um, are we using the integral model to describe our experience? Are, are we finding our, trying to have our experience fit with a mental map that we're developing? What's that? I didn't understand that. Um, so uh, the, Is, is the emphasis of our experience, is the foundation of our experience, a mental experience that we're then um, having emotions about and sensorial experiences about? Or are we having sensorial and emotional experiences and having and describing mental constructs to make sense of them? Kind of which came first, the chicken or the egg? And I recognize that um, for me, it's not that one is, um, well, I, I feel like for each person, the foundation is going to be a little bit different. And so it may be an interesting topic for debate that I'd like to see where um, different people have a different sense of emphasis, whether their foundation is in the mental or in the emotional or in the sensorial kind of like lines of development. Does that make a little bit more sense? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And that comes from the context of um, uh, Kim Barta's work and Terry O'Fallon, where they describe shadow work as um, our, our experiences are stored um, sensorial first, and then our mind um, is interpreting them and making up story. And so that resonates for me, but I recognize that other people may have different experiences and would like to hear about that and debate about it. Um. 
Oh, I, see, I really like, I guess, the debate between the mind and the body. I'm not sure if I'm going to contradict you, uh, Charles, because I, I think I sort of grok what some of you are saying. But um, I was thinking about, I, I've thought quite a bit about the throat chakra lately in terms of kind of integral. It seems like there's quite a lot that, that comes on. I was thinking about, Natalie, you are saying about um, like maybe trying to express or finding limitations in the in the platform or like having all of these kind of embodied feelings and intuitions and then how does that actually uh come forth into like communication and stuff i'm not sure that's what you're saying but that's the way i took it and there's some uh beauty about the throat chakra to be able to communicate various things like to be able to do that intellectually to be able to say a map for example like integral um but also like your embodiment your emotions or the other kind of uh chakras and i think for me probably one of my biggest pleasures of these call is a kind of the embodiment that comes with having a more polished uh, voice or throat or like listening, like to be able to, as simple as it is, just to be able to cut between green and uh, teal um, or whatever the, I sometimes get muddled with the colors, just to be able to cut between those two. Um, or I was kind of grateful for Tim just to be saying like, to be able to distinguish between good and bad at a certain stage, for example, green. I mean, that's quite a simple thing to do, but I can feel the, uh, the embodiment that comes that comes out of it like instead of having this blast soup now i have like chicken and peppers and onions and stuff like I, it actually comes alive so um i think there is a lot of feeling that comes with mapping and being intellectual i think actually there's a movement out of green that there should be an integral and appreciation that the intellect also still comes with it the body or the passions um some dualism between the mind and body, I think, somewhat drops. So that's at least my take on it. Thank you, Paul. Um, go ahead, I'm gonna be right back. Uh, I think, uh, go ahead. You think I could close up here just because um, I, I, I do have to go. Um, but uh, sort of what I hear he, um, going on is, uh, it's sort of like uh, a disagreement between types and really uh, the integral model theory is just like a framework to describe experience and I think the problem comes in just not really being able to to um, uh, describe specifically um, what it is that's that's lacking and what it is that's um that we're talking about exactly but I, I i sort of feel like we've come to some consensus um and uh yeah i don't i don't really have any anything more that i want to uh dive deeper on this um i think we've done a pretty good job and sort of bringing together different perspectives that talk about basically everything from the integral perspective and my perspective from, from this perspective. So anyways, thank you guys. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll see you guys next week. I would like to jump in here for the outro <laughs> and uh, want to go into meta perspective of this course, the last two calls. I find uh, I would like in the, in the next time or the next two times to have a balance to do it differently, to do really only two or three people to go deeper into something. I find it a little bit scattered. Everybody is taking, yes, it's nice to collect these views, but it's not really connecting what what one says and the other says, and then we go back and forth. And I would find it more coherent if two people, maximum three, talk about one topic and go deeper, instead of having to do all the round with everybody then talking about something else again and something else again. So this is a suggestion for you, Ryan. I appreciate as a collection of um, of ideas or views or whatever, but I don't see it as a crossfire. Uh, crossfire for me needs to go deeper, needs to go to arrive somewhere, uh, you know, maybe not arrive somewhere, but not just stay in a 
like this, you know? I don't know if you understand what I mean, but I would appreciate it, it more concise that we can really explore one of or two of these items instead of talking about 10 at the same time. Just to respond to that really quickly, Heidi, um, my intention for doing a very broad topic was to surface specific disagreements between two or three people because no one came forward to me with specific ideas in which another person was ready to debate one-on-one. -on -one. So that my idea of this was we would do popcorn so that we would surface an issue that we could go deeper in. So it seems like there are several that I'll get to uh, at the end. Yeah, I just wanted to, to wrap up myself on this, how you know the mental model can influence our own experience. And to me, um, discovering this mental model, model maybe made it easier for me to see, hey, those are actually my valid experience, you know, and, and that was kind of the, the whole point. It's like, oh, okay, like these, all these experiential and, and practice and, and here's a framework that helps you kind of pinpoint towards them. And that's, that's why we're able to have these discussions because we, we kind of convene towards that, that, that framework uh, to some extent. But it's also, it just in itself, it's, it's, it's uh, emerging into herself, into all of her dimensions. So um, we can totally uh, dis dis discard the, the mental model and just live our life uh, from where we, we, we are in our own development, in our own lines of development and so on. I think the, um, the presentation that Ken did in, in, in his last show uh, was really valuable for this because he's pointing at all the different uh, ways, interpersonal, interpersonal, um, spiritual, kinesthetic, aesthetic, and, and so on about how we grow. And so this is, uh, this is great. I think, yeah, I would agree as well. Like if we can focus on, and I think we can see some emerging uh, point of interest, focus a bit more uh, on the next discussion. And I think that's part of the process to figure it out between us what is, what is emerging and what's the most uh, essential part to, to, to tackle. So yeah, thank you again. Um, I'm going to go a little slow here just to maintain a little self-awareness. I feel very full after today in a really positive way. I really appreciate, I feel like my brain is being stretched a little bit. And so I'm holding more tension, more, more weight. I'm excited about, it's almost more of a feeling right now, but I'm excited about this idea of, of bandwidth, of what Natalie, what so many people have been talking about. And the metaphor, one metaphor I have is of a person, if I'm, if I'm very unaware of my emotional self, the way I talk might be super monotone. There might be whole levels of information that aren't moving through. So I think of it as bandwidth. And then someone says, hey, you know, you can loosen up. And at first, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. It's not a dimension that I'm familiar with. But then at some point, as I become more self-aware or as I take acting classes or improv classes or something, I start to include more information through emotional affect or through modulation of tone. And it might or might not be conscious. It might or might not be a honed skill. But at any rate, I start doing that and my bandwidth opens up. It's like technology allowing more of something. And I feel like that's what we're talking about is more and more dimensions of that. So I think there is something that is possible that we might be create opening up our ability to discuss. And it's not just intellectual, but it is communication. And if it's just intellect that's being communicated, like if we didn't have any video here, we had no sound, we were just using words, I think most of us would say, oh, we're probably losing something. And I have the impression there's more and more dimensions and we're speaking to these dimensions that include temporics and things that are a real stretch for me to, to talk about, but I, I feel their existence after this conversation and
I'm excited about that. <laughs> did uh did everyone get a chance to go? Oh, Charles, go ahead. I love to take part in conversations like this because they challenge me uh, in a couple of different ways. My main motive, I guess, is to understand the integral model better and better. Uh, it's it's uh, the most powerful, all-encompassing uh, meta-theoretical map I've ever discovered. And it's very challenging to master it. And every conversation, I feel like I'm mastering it a little better than before. For example, when I was describing the healthy aspects of green, somebody added uh, there's an environmentalist preoccupation that uh, respect for uh, the great web of life and the independence of all things that is characteristic of green. And that started me thinking, yes, that's true, but I'm wondering why somebody at Orange Rational, a scientific third person point of view, couldn't uh, share that same um, perspective. So that's something I'm gonna to have to think some more about. And uh, it, it's an obvious way in which um, I'm moving toward that goal, which is probably in the end unattainable. And that is to understand the integral model completely. Uh, the other way that these conversations help me is to become a better integral thinker about the world, that is about issues. For example, last night in my philosophy group here in White Rock, we discussed the question, what is a person? So uh, my question, of course, is what, what is uh, an integral way of talking about this concept? Uh, I can tell you after last night's uh, conversation, it's a work in progress, but that's the second thing I look for, uh, enhancing my skill at using the integral model to talk about issues in the world, politics, economics, uh, social uh, goings on, culture, and so on. So I really appreciate being in, in this group for those two reasons. And um, once in a while, I probably feel something too. And that's a bonus. Um, thank, thanks, Charles. Um, so yeah, that was, that was uh, thank you everyone so much for sharing. And I also, Charles, could you turn off your uh, mic? Thank you. Um, I, I just want to thank everyone for being patient with my very strict uh, timekeeping. Um, I am Japanese, so uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> that's a Japanese, very Japanese thing to do. And um, a few of my closing statements would be Natalie uh, posted a good question some while back. I appreciate the chat is being blown up here. And her question for the group was Do you experience larger and higher stages as more mental or more sensorial ways of navigating? I think that'd be a great topic for Damiano's platform that we can pitch our two cents in on um, and have a discussion about. And also we've surfaced some ideas for a deeper debate between fewer people or even a presentation. Karen has a presentation idea. And it sounds like something that seems right for discussion, uh, maybe next Thursday, would be between a debate about the body and the mind. And uh, and how that would unfold. And, and Natalie, you, you know, you said you were interested in that subject. So I'd be curious to see, hear more about what you mean by that and how we can organize that going forward. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch and see what uh, happens next Thursday. And also, I'll also say that Tim and I were talking a little bit about Tim taking the reins and doing the facilitating sometime. Some people have told me that they wanted to hear they wanted me to be a participant in this. Um, so that, that might be nice, especially when I start doing more facilitation on my job. I may not want to do that uh, for fun on the integral call. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, see you on Sunday. If not, then, then Thursday. Aloha. Thanks, everyone.